I think social media has a reach that is more rapid uh, and, and, and more diverse than mainstream media because precisely of its nature. When you are actually putting a message on social media, you are reaching people everywhere. Uh, you are not confined to a particular geographic reach. You are also not confined to, to any particular group. Anybody can have access to your message. And at the same time, it is an interactive process. So they can ask you questions. They can give you information that you can react to or use. And so it becomes a process of engagement rather than a one-way communication. A printed newspaper is one-way communication. You can write a letter a few days later, but it is still one-way communication. Whereas uh, with social media, there is interactivity, therefore more transparency, more accountability. And thanks to modern technology, the reach of social media is far greater than that of conventional media. It's important to remember that the Charter of the UN begins with the words, we the peoples. We have to be accountable to the peoples of the world in whose name the UN was set up. So my hope would very much be that the United Nations would engage with the peoples of the world through public medias like social media, even if there is a danger that sometimes social media will be quicker than UN processes and that negative versions or unauthorized versions of UN issues are out there before the UN can respond. If anything, it calls for the UN to be more responsive, to set up social media teams in their information departments who are engaging with the public on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, putting out material themselves. That, I think, would be the way to go in the, in the future. This is an evolving process. Member states themselves do not have a uniform approach. Some are much more willing to embrace social media. Some are less. Some countries have banned Twitter or Facebook. Other countries uh, encourage their ministers and their members of parliament to use Twitter and give them guidelines on how to use it. So it varies. There is a, 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 a different approach from one government to, a, to the next. I hope the United Nations would adopt the most liberal approach possible. Uh, upholding the principles of freedom of expression that are so important in UNESCO and in the United Nations. And that we would therefore have a UN approach that is open, that chooses the most accessible means rather than the most restrictive. The UN being a, a governmental and intergovernmental body has certain restraints. There are some things that I have said today in my speech at UNESCO that I might not have been able to say if I was still a UN official. Uh, a certain level of candor is not possible within an intergovernmental context and that is understood, I think, as part of the rules of the organization. But that doesn't mean that we should use the lowest common denominator of censorship when it comes to others expressing themselves. And I feel confident that young people in the UN system, if they're entrusted with this, will learn their way to use this responsibly and effectively.